Hello and welcome to the show. We are back on Beam NG Drive with three more cars taking on the American Descent. Starting with a Bolide, but not just any old Bolide. This is a rally spec version of the car. Admittedly, it does look a little bit strange. You see, the control wheels and tyres that we are using for this series. While they go on the car, no problem. With the way that this thing is set up from, from standard, I can't actually make the track width any wider to have the wheels sit nicer in the wheel wells. Uh, so yeah, it does look a little bit odd. You know, it's uh, something that we are going to uh, have to live with. We do also have some corner names now for our circuit, which is always good. Uh, turn one here is going to be Cliffhanger. There are going to be plenty of cars that fall off their turn two. Daytona, due to the uh, steep banking uh, that we have going on. Don't have a name yet for turn three. This uh, nasty hairpin. Oh, we're going to go slidey, slidey with the uh, with the bow line a little bit. Turn four, we're coming up to here is going to be a panorama after oh that panorama at Bathurst oh okay even me being a bit cautious we've got it over shot the jump it's a horrible horrible section I think the bow line's actually fine <laughs> oh it's buckled the chassis up unbelievably large amounts it still works though <laughs> it still drives I mean not very well but it does it does still drive that is mighty impressive. I say mighty impressive. Those that saw the uh, Driven Till Destruction stream I did a little while ago will know just how insanely tough this car is. A uh, couple of other things. There are a couple of other corners as well that have got names. And we also have a new finish line obstacle to play with. Yeah, when we complete the course, there is a caravan to destroy. Well, we, we kind of completed the course. I mean, that's a very, very cheaty run. It made it. And let's now try and do it properly. Also, the caravan's buggered off. This corner is another one with a name now. This could be called Sebring because of, well, the very, very bumpy nature, much like the final corner at uh, Sebring. Where, oh, where are we going to break? Well, that's not the way we're going to break into that turn. That's uh, <laughs> just going to arrive backwards. I mean, it's a reverse entry. Sure. You know what? We'll go with that. We'll claim that that's, that's how it was supposed to go. Oh, because we're going to slide our way through Daytona. I know, we can be aggressive there. We definitely can be aggressive there. Though, again, this... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. We can... <laughs> That's the thing. I, I feel like there are places where we can probably be a bit braver. However, that then changes all your breaking points. And we didn't fall off the cliff by about a millimetre or two. Across the crest, but that's going to bounce us out wide. Can't save that. Nope. Ah, I don't know what got it so upset about the about the hairpin. Oh, it's flattened. It's flattened. It's fallen into the river. It's still probably going to be drivable, though, if we can keep it out of the water. Oh, don't flood. No, <laughs> I should have put it in reverse, probably. Oh, engine's locked up. We've made it into a convertible. It's not the conventional way cars are made into a convertible, but it is the BMNG driveway. Pins that uh, get the car all grumpy. There, for example, we, we're kind of turning initially, we're fine, and then it's just, nope, we're going to forget what we were supposed to be doing. Oh, God. We're a little bit sideways, that panorama. We got over it cleanly this time around. That might be too much on the inside, I think. Yep. Oh. It was a good, it was a good run over panorama, but uh, up towards the jump, and we clipped. It was the inside of the mountain, really, that got us in trouble. Engines hydrolocking. We're not going to save that one. That's a dead car. Ever so slightly. Now, through Seabrook, we haven't had the same issues with running wide as we've seen from other cars. It's actually carrying really good speed through that Seabrook corner. I think we actually did get some air time that time around. Oh, it's very wide. Can we recover all of that? No, too much power, too much power, too much power. We are, Again, we have got it round, but... Uh, with a clonking across the inside. Ah, the crash we got air time, and as we landed, I think I was a little bit wonky trying to get on the brakes. Well, the Bolide has certainly been uh, taking a liking to the <laughs> to the stream. It has fallen in there by far the most of the vehicles so far. I think we shall name it Bolide Stream for this uh, for this rally car, rally spec car, I should say. Not initially intended as a rally car, but there we go. Uh, I've kind of also had a way to deal with the hairpins. We sort of chuck it in with the with a handbrake a little bit. Not enough to get the car oversteering, just enough to get the rear turning. 
it's a fine line and you can easily make mistakes doing that, but it does help the bolide uh, deal with the weird understeer issues on the exit of the hairpins that, uh, that we are having to deal with up towards, well, the first crossing of the bolide stream. A little bit of bouncing on the outside, but we've just about got away with it. Oh, this hairpin, we're coming in very, very hot. Oh, grab the handbrake, try and get it around. We are again okay. It's right on right on the limits. Seabring have not been too bad in this car, actually. It's got pretty decent grip out the other side of all of those horrible, horrible bumps across the crest now. This braking zone, it drops away. It's one of those that's very easy to uh, lock the rears and go for a spin. Uh, we've got a little bit of struggle on the exit there. Now into the final quarter. It drops away on the inside, and that bounces the bowline around. Across the mud, we get some wheel spin up towards the finish line, and it is going to be completed. The caravan will take a whack. <laughs> Toilets come off. <laughs> we did punt the toilet clear of the caravan. The, well, the entire caravan came off the uh, base, as you would expect, and it is, uh, well, scattered across the area. Uh, actually, still, that the, the actual shell is relatively intact. As you would expect, Bolide Rally Car, pretty solid. Pretty solid down here. I think that's going to be a good time, and that may well challenge the uh, the I-Series. Up next, we have got a front-wheel drive vehicle. The Fiat 1 is going to take on the course. Now, the front-wheel drive Covert did pretty well. The front-wheel drive Covert was not slow down this stage, and this has got a similarly powerful sort of engine. Uh, we'll kind of see how it goes, really. It uh, <laughs> should be able to handle... It should be able to handle... Oh, God. It should be able to handle corners okay. This is, this is not a bad vehicle to drive. Don't know what it's going to do when it comes to the uh, comes to the jump. Oh, it'll be easily flat out through Daytona, which is, uh, which is nice. Towards the hairpin we go. Again, we'll probably end up using that little bit of handbrake to uh, we can get away with it in this because you can just put your foot down out the other side and it will be uh, it'll be okay we'll be flat out up over, up over para, uh, panorama i think so although we've got to get sure make sure we get the car turned for the jump i'm amazed that survived all of that uh, <laughs> that was on the ragged edge of the course and it still made it which is remarkable we're up to oh it's bent something in the steering though i think something in that steering oh we can see what it's done to the wheel Okay, yeah, as we're coming down in towards that braking zone, the car was getting very unhappy. So at some point, we've managed to ping the wheel off. Um, the good news is, though, yeah, a lot of that opening section is going to be very much flat out. Now, up over Panorama, we can maybe make it flat. No, maybe not. I think there's got to be a lift. <laughs> I think there might just might have to be a lift in all of that. We've squished a little car. Uh, let's roll this over. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Oh dear, indeed. The bonnet is the highest point on this vehicle. Well, I guess maybe the broken rear bumper is the highest point on the vehicle. <laughs> yeah, not not quite flat out over panorama there. It's a yeah, lovely amount of grip that we have to work with. Okay, we oh no 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 no. <laughs> okay, might have. Uh, might have been a, that that was a silly silly maneuver we can be flat out through daytona that's not really a problem with the car however you clip that rock face on the inside and then there will be a problem i do think astonishingly it's fine it's it's gonna run out of the fuel tank is gone so it's gonna run out of fuel and set fire to everything however up until that point it is actually still a driving car well driving fireball is probably a better term for it well, typical. I praise a car and then immediately crash it. Uh, not really the car's fault, though, that one. Uh, it is a really surprisingly good car to drive down here. There is an awful lot of grip, easily flat out through this first section, and not only that, we're up to about 65-ish miles an hour in towards this hairpin, and we get slowed down really well. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with this. 
quite how quick it's going to be overall. I mean, I don't think we quite have the power in these acceleration zones to really challenge the top cars, but uh, we could probably worry the Covert here. Worry the Covert more than I was expecting it to. Uh, as we again slow it down in towards the next corner, we go. No major issues across those bumps. For a car that isn't a actual rally spec, this one, the suspension is doing a very good job of dealing with these bumps, with these crests and so on. Uh, yeah, I've got it on rally tyres, but the suspension is still the normal uh, turbo car suspension. So <laughs> that is doing really well at stopping the vehicle oh, having big issues across these crests. Oh, actually quite neatly done in that braking zone as well. One more corner to go, Fiat. One more corner. No, it's going to bounce around a little bit wide there. We're through the mud, though. Run it up across the finish line and into the side of the... Oh, the caravan survived, although we did roll it. So, <laughs> the caravan might have survived in one piece, which we can't have. We did roll the caravan. That's a good car. That's a, I'm, I'm very impressed with the way that this dealt with that, uh, with that descent. As I said, not on specific rally suspension and so on. That did very, very well. Oh, this is quite a poorly car now, though. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the, oh, we ate the bumper. No. <laughs> dastardly caravan. Dastardly, dastardly caravan indeed. So, the final vehicle to go down this course is going to be the D15 Off-Road. The big highly modified D-Series. Now, I should say this is not quite running on the control wheels. I think we'll have to have a separate sort of set for the trucks and the larger vehicles uh, because the wheels are tiny on this. This kind of truck's wheels won't work on the normal road cars, but the road car wheels kind of don't work on this. So don't worry about the wheels too much. Uh, <laughs> now, this is the sort of vehicle that will be built to survive the demands, certainly of the the heavy jumps, but quite how it's going to handle, oh god, these faster corners, I don't know, that higher right height is good for dealing with big jumps and big bumps, but is it going to be good with dealing with the technical corners? Oh, we can't quite get it stopped in time. Interesting, speed-wise, that was about as quick as the Faya, honestly, out of, out of turn two, but uh, braking-wise, no, not not there at all. Now we should be on to the area where this truck will be strong. We can hopefully be aggressive over this uh, over this crest. It should smooth all the bumps out. No, nope, or it can bounce it around even more than more than everything else. Okay, so big beefy off-road suspension actually causes more issues because you bounce uncontrollably. Uh, we were a little bit out of shape. Something to take note, I guess. Uh, oh, God, panic, 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 grab handbrake, chuck the car into the corner. Amazingly got away with all of that, but we're going to be well wide through Sebring. There's nothing I can do with that one. God damn it. Oh, we just saved it for the hairpin, but uh, bouncing around on the way into Sebring is just all out of shape. I mean, the truck's fine. The truck survived that kind of throw off the mountain. Struggled vehicles, but ru run ruined, sorry. Well, I'm starting to learn where we are going to have to break into some of these corners now. I wonder if we can get away. We can probably get away with diving a little bit more to the inside at turn one there. Uh, we can't really do much more through turn two than we already are. And then it's going to have to be a nice oh, early jump on the brakes. All-wheel drive will help us able to power our way around that corner. Uh, panorama next. Carefully does it on the way up there, yeah, if we can get this nice and smooth, then we're okay across the bumps. That's what we want to see. That's what we are expecting more from the from the D-Series. Yeah, if we can keep it in a straight line heading up towards that, it's fine. If we get it a little bit wonky, that's when it starts bouncing around. Oh, early on the brakes is going to uh, get the back end moving around a little bit prematurely. We are through this time around. Now, Sebring... Get the truck turned early. Yeah, hit that inside. That's the line that we want. That's where we want to be putting the vehicle across that crest. I don't know if we've got airtime quite in the D-Series. However, we are over that section nicely. One more corner to go in the pickup truck. Again, patience required a little bit as everything flexes through there. That was a very, very good run. That was a very good run for the D-Series. And we shall celebrate by... Not only destroying a caravan, but apparently mounting the trailer. The caravan's kind of reassembled itself around the D-Series. <laughs> In fact, the D-Series hardly took any damage from disintegrating. Ah, it has, it has 
acquired a cupboard. <laughs> it's the new spec D series with additional storage, although not that it would stay in there very long. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's, that's quite impressive. Well done, D-Series. Um, yeah, the brakes aren't great on this. You've got to really, really quite uh, quite early getting slowed down into some of those hairpins. And that's, you know, we talk about from speed similar to that uh, pretend Fiat. So, yeah, brakes aren't great. However, if you get the truck lined up for the jumps properly, we can carry plenty of speed there. No problem. You know, there's plenty of power, plenty of traction in this one. I'm definitely going to be very curious to see how everything lines up on the uh, leaderboard after uh, this week. Whether it will stay just as close as it was uh, from the first one. Well, it is safe to say that uh, things are remaining close. the top of the table, there is no change. The I-Series and Covet will lead the way. The D-Series, though, goes into third place. So 113.9 for the truck. Only three-tenths of a second down on that Covet rally car. The, the Fiat is a further second down the road, but a 14.8 is still a pretty good time. It's a hundredth of a second faster than the Pazima Pro Car. The boat ice time, not the, I say not the greatest, it's a 16 0. I perhaps expected that one to be a little bit quicker. I mean, we still got, you know, this group of cars covered by four seconds, which is probably some of the closest we have seen in a series such as this one. That's it for, for a mix of cars, while okay, they have been largely off road focused, both the Fayette and the Pazeman, not at all, um, and different drive lines and so on. It's Closer than I expected, which is what we want to see. You know, we want to see a, a close leaderboard. Um, okay, we haven't had any crazy, ridiculous cars go down yet, like the hill climb cars or the Covert V6 R4, that sort of thing. However, yeah, it's it's nice to see. It's nice to see a uh, very, very close leaderboard. That, though, is going to be it for this video. As ever, I shall link all the mods used in the description so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.